In this quick tutorial, we will look at an interesting technique in Blender. We will learn how to easily create an explosion, like this. So, let us start with a blank new file. Delete this default cube, and from the Add menu, add one UV sphere. Then go to the Modifiers tab, and add a Subdivision Surface modifier. Change the levels to 2, and apply this modifier. We will now add a black material for this sphere. Let us first turn on the rendered view mode. Then go to the materials tab, and create a new material for this sphere. Change the base color, to complete black. We can actually expand this little bit, so that the labels are better visible. Now, scroll down, and lower this specular value, somewhere near 0.1. It will reduce this glossy effect reflection on its surface. This will be basically our bomb. If you want to add a netted cover to it, like what you have seen at the beginning of this tutorial, then go to the Add menu and add an Icosphere. Then open this operator box. Change the subdivision levels to 4. Before we add a material for this, go to the Modifiers tab. Add a modifier, called the Wireframe Modifier, here. Then, apply this modifier. Now go to the Materials tab, and add a new material. Change the base color to something like dark brown. You need to also change this value field, to just point 0.1. As a result, we get a dark netted cover for our little bomb. While this icosphere is selected, press the Shift key, and also select this original sphere. Join them together, from the Object menu. Let us rename this object to Bomb, we will explode this very soon. But before that, we need to add a particle system for this. So, go to the Particles tab. Then click on this plus sign, to add a new particle system for this object. Ensure that we are on the Emitter tab. We have to now fine-tune these values, they will determine the way the explosion will happen, including the number of pieces, and their velocity. Whatever value we enter in this number field, this object will break into that many pieces, after the explosion. It is up to your choice. We can enter 10, or maybe 20 for the number of pieces. Then the start and end frame numbers will determine when the explosion will happen. Let us enter 10 for the start frame, and 12 for the end frame, because we want the explosion to happen very fast, within two frames. And this lifetime determines how long the broken parts will remain visible in the scene. Generally, it will be a very high value matching to your scene length. Let us go with 200. Then expand this velocity section. This value determines the speed, at which the broken parts will spread, after the explosion. Let us go with 20 meter per second. And in this randomize factor, you can enter 10. Also, you can turn on this rotation. It will make the broken parts rotate, while they run away after the explosion. So, we are done with this, particle system setup. Now go to the Modifiers tab, and add a modifier, called Explode. You can leave all these fields with their default settings, no change needed. If you now run the animation, you will see the bomb explode. Pretty cool. And if you add an explosion sound effect, along with this visual animation, it will sound even more real, something like this. But the particles are visible here, like these white dots. To hide them, go to the Particles tab, and scroll down below. Expand the section called Render. Change this render type, from Halo to None. Now the particles won't be visible anymore. Let us test it. Cool. Finally, for the fire part, you should set up a fire and smoke simulation, along with this explosion. That is the ideal way. But in this tutorial, our primary objective was to discuss on this explode modifier, so we won't make it too complex by introducing a fire simulation on this. Instead, we will simply add one fireball, and animate its property, to somewhat make an illusion of the fire. So, add one UV sphere, or icosphere here. First, go to the Render Properties tab, and turn on the Bloom option. Then go to the Materials tab, and add a new material. We will make it an emission object. So let us select the emission type here. Then change the emission color, to red or orange, something that is close to red. Also, change the emission strength, to 100. Now, we will modify the size and the strength of this fireball, based on the explosion status. 
So, go to frame number 10, where the explosion starts. Then go to its properties. Maybe we can give a more meaningful name to this object. Let us call it a fireball. Now, go to the object properties tab. Let us change the size factors to zero, so that the fireball is initially hidden. Right click here and insert a keyframe. Then go to frame number 15, the explosion is in the midway. Let us change the size factor of the fireball to 0.7. Same to be done for all the three dimensions. Now right click and insert another keyframe. Let us go to frame number 20. We will now make the fireball very small, so just point one here. Don't forget to insert the keyframe. Finally, go to frame number 22. Enter the size factor as zero, so that the fireball disappears completely. And insert a keyframe. We are done with the size part. We need to do a similar setup with the emission strength, so that it is in sync with its size animation. Go to frame number 10, and insert a keyframe for strength 100. Then go to frame number 15, and change the strength to 750. And insert a keyframe. Then go to frame number 20. We will again make it 100. And we need to insert a keyframe. That's all. Don't expect anything spectacular, it will give us a very simple fire illusion after the explosion. As I said earlier, our objective is only to demonstrate the explosion part. For the fire, you should ideally set up a fire and smoke simulation. And just in case you are new here, you can check my tutorial on the same. The link is in the video description. So, we have learned a quick way today, to set up an explosion in Blender. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.